Guys, uh, sorry about that. I got kicked off there. I'm not sure what happened. Um, let me get reset up here. Apologize. Well, having some issues today. Okay, so let's get back to the screen. Uh, what you can do to set up leads and referrals is really just um, create what they call a C CTC card. Uh, that is a consent to contact. So it's a very gener generic card. It has their name, phone number, address, and basically, excuse me, um, the different types of um, products they, they would be interested in learning about. So for example, you can create a consent to contact card that has Medicare products, Part D standalone, uh, Medicare supplements, um, any of those types of things. Uh, and on the same card, you can also put things like dental, uh, life insurance, um, a lot of different things all on the same card. So consent to contact card can be a very good tool um, to have. Um, so if you start working with the doctor's office, if you build that relationship and they are uh, willing to collect consent to contact cards or at least have a, um, a Dropbox, that you can access, uh, that, that patients can drop their stuff into, um, that's a good way to get some leads, right? And some referrals. Uh, the other thing is going into doctor's offices or uh, care clinics, urgent care centers, emergency, emergency rooms, um, and setting up the same thing, or talking to the staff and saying, listen, if anybody's having any issues with their insurance, if they, they come in and they're, they're just having issues, they're, they're having problems, they can't pay for this, that, the other, uh, they're complaining about their drug cost. Uh, here's my card or here's a consent to contact card. Um, and what I can set up with you is I can come in maybe every week, every two weeks and pick these cards up from you uh, unless you want to reach out to me and um, have me come sooner. So a couple of different ways to get some soft leads and referrals there. Some of the other things that you can do is uh, make connections in your community, right? Um, libraries great place to go ahead and, and um, make yourself known. I usually rent a um, a conference room inside of a library once a month during open enrollment. It usually costs about $25 for the day. Um, and I'll spend about a half day there. And I'll just say uh, that I'm doing a uh, Medicare educational event. And so I'll do a seminar that takes me about 30 minutes and then I'll make myself available for the next two and a half hours. Um, you'll be surprised how many seniors still go to the library, <laughs> right? So um, just having your presence in an, in an area that they frequent sometimes makes a great impact on whether or not you're gonna get uh, known in the community and get some referrals coming in. Um, 55 and older communities are are excellent uh, place to be able to do seminars or educational events or really just have a, a sit sit down and talk. Um, you'll notice as you spend more time as a Medicare agent, um, they usually have uh, kits and coffee or something to that effect that the area managers will do for us, the agents. And we can do something similar with the 55 and older communities. And you'd be surprised if you go in and talk to either their marketing director or um, anybody who's in charge of their events, uh, how willing they are to let you come in and do something as long as you're not trying to stuff, stuff, uh, stuff things down uh, the patient's throats. If you're there on educational purposes or in a, in a capacity to help people, um, they are very willing to let you come in and spend time with their with their people. So 
these are some really, really good ideas to have um, your presence in front of seniors and that you can do by yourself. The last one on this page that I didn't touch yet is a retail location. So as we get into open enrollment this, this year coming up and even beforehand, if you guys were interested in this at, at this time, uh, you can talk to, um, actually you can shoot me a text message. My information should be on the top, which it looks like it went away. So I'll put it back in here. Uh, that's my number. You can shoot me a text if you're interested in something like this. But what we can do is we can set up for you to sit inside of a Walmart, sometimes a Publix or a CVS, uh, Walgreens. Uh, there are different retail locations that allow you to take a, a table and sit inside of um, those locations. Uh, that is all uh, taken care of for the most part by the carriers. Um, so all you have to do is show up and help seniors with their with their questions with their uh, Medicare insurance, right? Um, so that is a great way, especially during open enrollment or busier times, uh, flu season, things like that, where you can put your face in front of seniors and get a lot of uh, referrals, leads, sales out of that situation. Uh, so if you're interested in that, shoot me a text or reach out to Shane Ramage. Um, he has more information on that. Um, but it's just another way that you can go ahead and get in front of seniors and try to make that process where you get to the sale. So let's move on a little bit here. Um, so let's talk about the doctor's office a little bit more. So ultimately, the goal of a doctor's office is to try to get to a place with them where you're actually sitting inside of the office. Um, so if you have not seen, or if you're not able to watch my um, video or the Zoom call where we talked about um, the behind the scenes of how Medicare works and, and the money and everything else, um, I encourage you to reach out to me. Um, we can have more of a one-on-one -on -one talk about it until I do my next training, which will probably not be till next quarter. I usually do that training once a quarter. Um, but uh, ultimately, what you're what you're trying to convey to the doctor's office is that you want to help them with all of their patients. Um, generally, if a doctor truly understands that you know what you're doing, you're not just putting somebody on a plan. If you actually are working with the client, you're doing a, a dive into how they use their plans, what doctors they use, what's going to be the most effective product for them. The doctors um, a lot of times will allow you to sit inside of their office during certain times of the year. Um, some want you in there all year. Um, I've got about 28 doctor's offices right now uh, that would like agents inside of them. Those are spread between Florida uh, and Alabama. So if you're in one of those areas, let me know. I might be able to hook you up. Um, but a lot of those doctor's offices would like you to sit inside of those offices during certain times and certain hours, and um, they will actually refer patients into you um, while you're sitting there, uh, which I'll tell you what, in my, in my 13, 14 years of doing this, um, I have never had an easier sale than the doctor or the nurse bringing a patient directly to my table and saying, hey, you need to talk to Carl because Carl can help you with your insurance problems. That's a sale <laughs> almost every time, okay? So uh, the goal is to try to work inside of the doc doctor's offices. If you can coordinate that, that's really where you wanna go. <clears throat> now, um, Another way to set up with a doctor's office, if they don't have the space for you to be there, or if uh, it's just not appropriate for you to be inside of the office, um, those C to C cards that we talked about are very effective. Um, what I like to do with doctor's offices that are too small for me to sit in is I'll create the C to C cards and I will go ahead and print out, let's say a hundred of them and give the doctor's office uh, check-in staff the C to C cards. So when somebody comes in and they're complaining that 
their copay is too high, they've got too much of a deductible, their drug coverage is way too much. Um, hey, you know what? Why don't you have them fill out one of these cards and then just let me know when you have a stack of cards and I'll come in and I'll reach out to those folks. Or you can staple your business card to it as well and they have the option to call you or fill out the card and then you can call them. So either way, very effective. Uh, but ultimately, both of those, I, uh, both of those uh, situations lead to you trying to get referrals from the doctor's office. Um, what, what would be ultimately happening once you really establish a great relationship with the doctor's offices is that you will have a steady referral line coming in. That would be people who um, gain eligibility for Medicaid. You have people who are aging into Medicare. You have people who are moving into the area. All those people most likely will have to make changes to their plan. And what better way to get that referral from having a direct connection from the doctor's office? So just some insights from what my experience has been. Uh, but if you can establish that relationship, you'll be in good shape. So who do you want to talk to? Um, anybody in the front staff. So how I usually start my introduction with uh, a new doctor's office is I'll come in with a dozen donuts or two uh, and some coffee, or I might buy uh, four or five uh, little things of chocolate, uh, little bags of chocolate that would feed, you know, 20-ish people. And um, just talk to the front staff. Say, hey, you know, my name is Carl. I'm, I'm a Medicare insurance agent. I'm trying to build some relationships in the community. Uh, these are for you. <laughs> um, I would like to talk to either you or the office manager or whoever uh, coordinates your relationships with uh, vendors and things like that to be able to see what kind of relationship we can establish. Um, Generally, if you bring in something, they're going to be pretty apt to give you uh, at least a couple of minutes, right? And so you really have to tie down uh, what you want to say. But the goal is going to be to get to the office manager. The office manager really holds the key to the kingdom. Believe it or not, in our situation, they have more power than the doctor does because the office manager is not only responsible for um, whether or not you're going to have the opportunity to sit in the doctor's office or be the referral person that they send their patients to, but they also understand how patients are being billed as well. So um, the office manager really is your key link. So although you want to be super friendly to the front staff and they're going to be your first point of contact because you won't talk to the office manager generally when you first walk in, your goal is to get to the office manager and spend 15 minutes with them. Now, the office manager, you want to really have that conversation about, hey, this is what I do. This is what I understand. This is what my goal is. My goal is to be the liaison between you and the patient and the insurance company and basically fix all the problems. And in doing that, I should be able to make your, um, your practice more profitable. I should be able to save the client money and make their health plan very seamless. And then I can also intervene when it comes to problems with the insurance company. So really, those are the three main points that you want to bring across to the office manager. And then from there, it's negotiating how you're going to do that. Is it going to be through C2C cards? Is it going to be referrals? Is it going to be them handing out your business card or will it be some kind of combination of you sitting in the office and the other things in, com in combination? Okay, so really this kind of breaks down. Um, the more time you spend in the industry, you'll find uh, lots of patients do silly things. They call Joe Namath, <laughs> they call JJ, uh, they call the different Medicare lines, or they just have agents that are just not experienced and they don't understand how Medicare works, and they put them on plans that are just not good for the patients. Now, I will never say that there's a bad plan out there because every plan out there is built for a certain demographic of patient, but not every plan is good for every patient. So where other agents have failed, you can come in and fix it. And that's really what we want the doctor's office to understand is not only will you put them on the first 
uh, time into the right plan, but you will also have the ability to change uh, patients' plans that are just not on the right plan currently. Um, we'll probably get into that a little bit more in a little bit, but uh, where most agents are not able to change your average client uh, throughout most of the year, I will teach you some tricks on how to be able to do that. Um, okay, so one of the things that I, I like to highlight, and it's right here in the middle of the page, is that we want to explain both to the practice and to the patient that we are brokers. So what does that mean? That means that we don't have to have any bias. We don't have to say Humana is the best plan, United is the best plan. Oh, you should go with an HMO. You should go with a Medicare supplement. To us, it doesn't matter. In the, in the big scheme of things, we are really getting paid the same way, no matter what we put them on. Doesn't matter what company, doesn't matter really what product. So without having that bias, we're able to look at every situation for that client in a very quick and concise way. And we can put them into the right type of plan that's gonna make sure that their healthcare needs are set and it's gonna be the least expensive way for the client to go through. And in doing all of that, we'll actually make sure that the, the doctor's practice is gonna be the most profitable as well. So what we wanna do is explain the struggles to the office, right? I understand that there's agents that are out there that are putting your patients on plans that just don't make sense or make it hard for you to do your job. So um, we want to make sure that we, we communicate that with them. Um, now, this next line kind of talks about some of the other stuff that I did in the other training. So again, if you were not able to watch that training, reach out to me and I'll explain these things. But you want to talk to them about how the practice is reimbursed. You want to understand, you want to explain to them that they understand or you understand uh, what capitation is, what fee-for-service is, that they need to do their HEDIS and um, all their star rating requirement stuff. So when you have that communication with them, most agents really are just not privy to that. Most, most agents will look at the product, they'll say, hey, this looks pretty good, and they'll try to sell just that product, right? Uh, we're trying to teach you guys to do the opposite. We want to not sell a product. We want you to sell the right product, okay? So as you're having those conversations with the office managers um, and the patients, um, I usually just ask them, where are their biggest pain points and how can I help them the best to be most effective for them? Okay. So when we talked about the re re uh, retail locations, um, those are really best set up in low, low income areas. Um, there are, now you can do these yourself or you can go through um, Shane and get some, some other uh, preset uh, locations that are already there. Uh, but I like to look at Dollar General's, public soup kitchens, uh, any of the smaller pharmacies, uh, a lot of churches will allow you to set something up in Ambets or any other location that serves the community. So that could be a Meals on Wheels uh, location or a food pickup distribution, um, any of that kind of stuff. Those are really good areas to go ahead and set up a, um, a table. Um, and it doesn't have to be every day. Um, it could be on a, on a schedule, you know, once or twice a week, uh, once or twice a month. But as long as it's consistent on that schedule, you'll actually have um, not only patients and clients coming there and trying to see if you're there every time, but you'll also have people at those locations letting their customers know that you'll be there on those certain days. So um, routine when it comes to the relo retail locations is very, very important because you wanna make sure that it's consistent so people know that you're uh, ongoing resources. Um, <laughs> if you're gonna do any of this, uh, 
I would ask to put some post some some signage up. Um, that can be little flyers. That can be different things. Um, that that basically let people know when you're going to be there. Now, you shouldn't have to pay for that signage, right? Especially if you're going to do some kind of carrier event. If you're going to have uh, one of the specific carriers, let's say Aetna or United, Humana, whoever, um, be the main focus uh, as far as how you're marketing. Now, I said marketing, not selling, right? So how you're marketing, um, generally, they'll pay for that postage for you. So again, reach out to your area managers for your different companies that you are, are contracted with and um, work with them on trying to set things like this up. Um, now for the things that you're gonna set up on your own, just go in there, talk to the store manager, say, hey, do you mind if I put a couple of signs up, put a table up for a couple hours uh, on Mondays every week? Um, shouldn't be an issue, right? As long as they don't have any policies against that, it should be pretty easy. So the places that you would wanna go Usually you want to have somewhere that has a pharmacy um, or at least some kind of um, medications or things that you would find inside of um, your health needs, right? So as long as a, a place has, you know, uh, aspirins and cold medicines and things like that, you should be fine. And I think you'd be stretched to find either a grocery store, a pharmacy, or something of the like that does not have some of that stuff in it. Um, the other thing that you can do, especially if you are able to set up one of these locations, is ask to put maybe a drop box inside of there so that you can have C2C, C2C cards and referral cards that people can drop off and you can go in and check weekly. Um, the other and probably most important part of uh, your communication with these retail locations, if you're going to set it up by yourself, is that you want to explain that you can help with more than just the insurance, right? Uh, most of you that have been on for a while, uh, I have gone through um, the state programs that are available. And if you're not uh, tracking, I have put on all the states that have state assistance programs into the Legacy Benefit Alliance uh, website. Just go into the resources and look inside of there. Each state with every um, extra help type benefit is inside of um, inside of that uh, portal. So. Um, if we go in there, we, we may spend a day helping a bunch of people get onto Medicaid in some form or fashion, but what that will ultimately do is require them to change their insurance, right? And if you help them with their Medicaid, why would they not use you for their Medicare as well? Which if you uh, get pretty good at your job, um, once you submit that Medicaid application, you'll have that C2C card already set in and um, you'll be able to call them in about three weeks once their Medicaid kicks in and you should have a sale that very month, okay? Okay. <clears throat> As you're speaking with them, um, obviously you don't want to <laughs> tell the retail locations, look, I'm just trying to make sales. Obviously that's the wrong answer. Our job as insurance agents really is to help people in the community. Um, and that's generally done through their insurance. Um, but if you look at the insurance companies, especially if you start looking at Medicare Advantage, you'll see that there is a lot of assistance programs for seniors built into these programs. That comes through um, Silver and Fit or Silver Sneakers. It comes through the different programs that are in there. It comes through food assistance, Meals on Wheels. I mean, there are a lot of programs that are built into these plans, especially on the Medicare Advantage side, to help the community. That doesn't include trying to help them with Medicaid or extra help with their drug coverage or any of the other stuff that I teach you guys to do. So really, when you're telling uh, the store manager or whoever you're talking to that we're trying to help people in the community, that's really what we are, are built to do. 
Uh, same thing with the doctor's offices. When the doctor's office kind of questioned, like, you know, why should we work with you? Well, I'm not just the agent that signs them on a plan. I can help them with a lot of different things. And I, I especially like to help them to see inside of their benefits package what other resources that they have that they probably don't realize that they have. Okay. Um, most of you are new, so this next line probably doesn't really um, apply to you, but as you start building your relationship with different areas in the community, different stores, different pharmacies, different doctors, um, lean on those relationships to help build your other relationships. So if you start talking to Publix down the road and you work with Dr. Johnson on Fifth Street, say, hey, look, I've got a great working relationship with Dr. Johnson trying to extend, extend my relationships. And so I know a lot of his patients use you um, as their pharmacy. I'd like to go ahead and coordinate some relationship with you as well. Things like that, okay? Um, skip the rest of that. So let's see, it's 1240. I like to usually stop that portion a little bit early and open it up for some questions. Uh, Mona, I see that you're in Florida. Mona, where are you at exactly in Florida? I'm in Santa Rosa Beach, um, Panhandle. So you're Tallahassee-ish? Yes. Okay. I'll have to think about that one. I'll, I think, yeah, I got to think a little bit more about that one. <laughs> okay. Uh, you're you're kind of right in the middle of two groups that I that I have access to. One's uh, primarily in Alabama, um, which you might actually be closer to, and the other one is Central Florida, uh, but on the East Coast. So you're kind of in the middle of both. Mm -hmm. Probably closer to Alabama. Okay, so what questions do we have, guys? Um, I know that's kind of a, a lot of information to take in. Um, it seems probably pretty um, pretty basic, um, but um, I can tell you, um, I really had never used Leadstar at all. I built my book of business, which was pretty large, as well as a whole uh, organization, um, off of these marketing practices. Um, and in doing that, within the first year, I was already a top 10 agency. So these are super effective uh, if you understand how to market those. So let me just uh, let me just have you guys hit me with some questions on things that might seem a little fuzzy or if you're needing some clarification on how to do any of that stuff. You guys make me feel like I'm the best trainer in the world. There's never questions. <laughs> okay. Well, let's do this different. Uh, Michael, you there? Hi, I'm here. Okay. Where are you at? I'm in California, Northern California. California. Are you part of... Um, uh, Brain's not working this morning. Whose team are you on? Um, that's a good question. <laughs> I'm not. Um, I just been well. I've been attending the the trainings because I'm a WFG WFG agent, so that's how I got involved with Better. But um, I don't know who my upline is yet. Gotcha. Who uh who brought you to to Better? Do you know? It was um Lucy and her. Last name is a Japanese name. I can't remember. Gotcha. Yeah, I know. Who, I know who it is. Okay. So you're gonna be working. Um, you, you guys got a pretty sweet situation out there. So uh, take what I said about the doctor's offices and apply it more to uh, the referral process that they have set up for the low income out there, right? Okay. Uh, or the or the social security. Uh, what do I want to say? Social security situation <laughs> that they have for the referrals out there, right? Um, 
again, another magic situation that really can do some great things for your business, book of business, right? And we're talking not just a couple of people, we're talking about large numbers of people that you can get in your book of business in a pretty short amount of time. Okay, great. And earlier you mentioned you did a, a Zoom call on educating people about Medicare. You do that once a quarter? Did that? No, no, no. So the, the training I do once a quarter really is a, uh, it's a proprietary training that I do. Nobody else trains on this information. Um, it is really the underlying uh, meat of how Medicare works. Uh, we talk about who gets paid, how they get paid, um, marketing, um, all kinds of stuff, right? Um, but that that is stuff you're just not going to get anywhere else. Nobody teaches you uh, the real difference between an HMO versus a PPO and a supplement, um, why the doctors might prefer one over the other. Mm -hmm. uh, but I only teach that once a quarter, and I do not record that one because I don't want to get an outside of LBA. <laughs> so um, I will probably do that training again in July. Okay, great. Um, so look out for that one. That will be, um, it'll be posted. Like the emails that you guys get for this, there'll be emails for that one. Um, and just look out for the one that says, I will not record this training. <laughs> That's the one that you want to attend. All right, thanks. I look forward to it. Um, absolutely. But the other trainings that you might be thinking about, um, if you guys look, we've got, um, and if you if you have not gotten your what to do next letter from Shane Ramage, if you've been around a little while since uh, since it was created, reach out to Shane. I have created a, a Word document that has a lot of different resources for you guys. Uh, one mm -hmm. of those resources is it, the YouTube channel that we post all of our previous trainings on, except for the one that's special, right? So um, I highly, highly, highly recommend page one and page two and three uh, to get you some, some really good clarification on how Medicare works and also how to pre present it to clients, right? If you're doing a seminar, if you're doing a face-to-face, um, you almost need to be able to do exactly what I do on page one. Um, and that training is right there for you. Okay. I usually wrap that around every quarter as well, uh, because it's kind of the meat and potatoes of what we do. Um, but page one is exactly what you would do for an educational event. And um, it's really just the, the, the need to know information of being an agent anyway. So if you have not seen that, I highly recommend going on and um, watching those. Okay, any other uh, questions, thoughts? Otherwise, I'm just gonna keep fucking down the line and talking to people individually. <laughs> Okay, Jennifer, where are you at? Hello? Hi, I'm with Better. Um, I'm under, well, Art Villanueva is my upline, which is under Cindy and Jesse, which is under um, Jeff Levington. Okay, so where, where are you physically located? Oh, California, I'm sorry. California. Los Angeles. Yeah. Oh, that's fun. I'll be going to San Diego here in a couple of weeks. So my first time in Cali. Yeah, oh, you're not too far. You're like an hour, a little over an hour from me. Gotcha. Well, California, I, I tell you, I, I would I would assume with all that they have going on out there, you guys probably will be doing very well uh, without having to do too much of what we talked today. But if you really, really want to build your book of business, um, start talking to these doctors, <laughs> right? Um, Physician-based marketing is the number one way to get recruits or not recruits, uh, to get your book of business built, right? So if you can establish that relationship with just two or three doctor's offices, um, you can have a very large book of business in a very short amount of time. It would take one open enrollment and you could have close to a thousand enrollments in one year, right? At which... Uh, pretty hefty paycheck so yeah thank you you're welcome um Kenzie where are you at
in Florida, um, Fort Lauderdale. Fort Lauderdale. Okay. Who, uh, whose team are you on? Um, Ryan, Ryan Tanner. Gotcha. I'll be thinking about you a little bit too. I've got a couple of connections down there that um, I might reach out to you directly. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Um, I'm probably gonna mess your name up really bad, but I'm gonna try it. Tasha Hiko, is that right? Where are you at? Sorry, uh, I, I was muted. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm in San Diego, California. San Diego. Man, you got a big team down there in San Diego, huh? That's awesome. Have you guys started working with those people out there um, with the referral program that they have set up? I'm just, just, just start learning, so I haven't started anything yet. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. I, I know we got a bunch of people on different levels and and been here for different periods of time so I was just curious um I, I hadn't really talked with you so I was just curious where you are in that process well well thank you very much yeah absolutely if you have any questions reach out to me okay let's see who else we have here uh is it Tamela Tamila Tamela Tamela Sorry about that. Okay. <laughs> Where are you at? Oh, that's a trick question. Uh, I'm actually in Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. That's, I'm gonna take note of that. I got some ideas for Puerto Rico, actually. Are you, do you live in Puerto Rico or are you just traveling to Puerto Rico? No, I'm actually living here now. Okay. Who, uh, whose group do you fall under, Tamla? Um, Frank Schoen under Jeff Levitan. Excellent. Okay, um, Gabe and I might be reaching out to you. Uh, might, not be, might not be really soon, but we've got some plans for Puerto Rico, so stand by on that one. Yes, sir. Are you, uh, are you bilingual? Um, learning Spanish, I can... Quito Espanol, I speak a little Spanish, so, um, but I am learning currently. Gotcha. Un poquito es bueno. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sounds good. Okay. Well, let me know if you have any questions, okay? Yes, sir. All right. Let's see. Uh, Marietta, where are you at? I'm in Virginia, Norfolk, Virginia. Norfolk, Virginia. I probably need to reach out to you too. Okay. Uh, That'd be great. Where'd you go? Your name went away from me. Marietta. Oh. M A R I E T T A. Who's uh whose group do you follow? Her? Uh Jeff Levitan. Are you directed, Jeff? Yes. Okay. Um, I've got, so Norfolk, you're what, about an hour out of Richmond? Yes. Okay. A little over an hour, but yeah. Gotcha. I've got a group that might be calling on some agents uh, to work some doctor's offices in Richmond. Would you be interested in that? Sure. I'll let you know once I get further down that line there. Uh, they're in an acquisition right now. So, uh, but that could be pretty fruitful very fast. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, let's see. Is it Ka? Doki? Kali. Kali. Mm -hmm. All right. Where are you at? Seattle, Washington. Seattle. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Who do you fall direct to? Uh, Cynthia. 
Excellent. I'm not tracking anything ginormous in Seattle at the moment, but I'm not, I don't have my hands in every pot. I just know the ones that I have my hands in. So um, do you have any questions or how, I haven't seen you on any of the calls. You, you must be pretty new. Is that correct? Oh, that's my second call. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. Well, um, and, and Holly and, and everybody else who um, has not had uh, some longevity with us. Um, again, I highly recommend you guys going back and looking at the YouTube channel and going through the four pages that I created for you guys. It really will give you some great insight on not only how Medicare works, but how to be able to effectively communicate that uh, to your clients as well. Um, I have a question. How can I get that PDF for the four page? Um, so the YouTube channel will have the actual Zoom calls that I did. The LBA um, actual LBA site, right? So you got you got three different sites, right? Mm -hmm. You've got the LBA website. If you go inside the that website into the resources, I have a bunch of documents inside of those. Each of the four pages is already in there in PDF that you guys can go ahead and download whenever you need to. Um, you've got the better uh, website with the LBA channel. That's really more for chat and communications. Um, and then you have uh, direct access to me, right? <laughs> so my phone number is in the chat. Um, if you find yourself struggling to get to one of those sites, um, I'm probably going to send you to Shane to get the welcome letter which each of you should have gotten. But if you have not, Shane has a nice Word document that he will send to you. And it's got links to all the different um, websites uh, that we have information on, whether it be forms, whether it be, excuse me, the Zoom trainings or what have you. So um, I generally don't send that stuff out directly myself, but um, we do post that stuff for you guys to have. So. If you don't have each of those websites, uh, just reach out to Shane. He's the one that did your contracting. Um, he can send you to that one page document that has all the resources in, in place. Um, and it's just a good thing to have uh, in case. So if you don't have that, just reach out to him and say, hey, I need the um, what to do next uh, Word document and he'd be glad to send it to you. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, well, we're just a couple minutes short of uh, 1 p.m. Eastern. Um, you guys don't have any other questions, which I'll give you a minute for that. But if you have any other questions, we'll go ahead and wrap up and call it a day. Uh, I appreciate everything.